So now, here's like a little, little trick that I do. So your first increment, the puppet's been standing still. And now you have to approach the puppet for the first time. So the idea would be this first increment, you don't want, I don't want him to burst into action. I want him to slowly come alive. So the first increments we call ease in. So you want to ease into that first movement. So the exercise that I do is I just go over to the puppet and I just touch the puppet. I just see where I'm going to hold him, how I'm going to move him, and I just touch the puppet and I don't move it. I really don't move it. I just hold the puppet like that and it kind of gets me into the zone of the puppet. Just touching the puppet, believe me, is an increment of movement. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to take one frame of that. And now I'm going to introduce the first movements. Like I, when I was practicing this, the back starts to rise and the rest of the body follows through. That's the thing that's going to happen first. It's almost like the back and the lower spine above the pelvis. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make like a little contest for me. I'm going to see how small an increment I can move. I'm going to get this guy to move ever so slightly. I'm going to touch his rib cage, hold him on his knees and just push back ever so slightly just to get the first subtle increment of movement there. Now with dragon frame, you've got this onion skinning, so you can go back, back and forth and see how much movement you give the puppet. Now, what I just did there was, I just moved the body a little bit and it was just the body. What you wanna do is, you wanna have the entire body come alive. So right now I just moved the, the back, so the rib cage and the head and that arm moved. Now I'm gonna just touch the rest of the puppet so that that first increment, the entire puppet is coming alive. Now each joint I refer to as an axis of movement. The wrist is an axis, the elbows, the shoulders, the back of the neck, all these are different axes of movement. And what you want to do is you just don't want to move one axis. You just don't want the puppet to move like this. You want the elbow to move, you want the shoulder to move, you want the wrist to move, you want multiple axes of movement happening all the time so that the entire puppet is coming alive. So we'll now we'll rotate the head ever so slightly. I'll bend the elbows because as he's coming up, the elbows are retracting. The fingers are moving a little bit. So the wrist is relaxing a little bit. And these are micro increments, tiny, tiny little flexes. And I'm gonna shift the weight. So I'm gonna go down to the ankles and I'm gonna move the body ever so slightly down there. Okay, so with dragon frame, I'm kind of shuttling back and forth looking at, at the increments. And when you get what you like, then you can commit and you can take a frame. So I'm taking one frame. Now when you're doing these little micro increments, to help slow down your animation, you can shoot on twos. Um, this way, because the movement is so subtle that by shooting on twos, you're able to kind of stretch the, the movement out over time. And because the increments are so close, so tight and small, that it's, you don't see as much chattering. But I'm going to forego that now. I'm just going to do this guy on one so you can see something animated on ones. So now I'm going to go back to the puppet. And what I do is I always approach the puppet with the same the same order of movement. I start with the center of the body and I work my way out from the center. First the hips, then the back, the spine, the arms, and the tips of the fingers. And I repeat that action every single time I approach the puppet. And it helps you in, in keeping in mind what you're doing, the order of what you're doing, and the action. So now I'm going to go back to the puppet. I'm going to just make the body start to move up by lifting the hips up at the knees. Then I'm going to continue with the, with the rib cage. I'm going to bend it up, but I'm also going to rotate it a little bit. Remember I talked about multiple axes. If I just have the rib cage move up on one axis, it's going to have a mechanical look. So what I try to do is I'll lift it up and I'll rotate it a little bit. So it's a more complex movement and it'll just make him look a little bit more alive. And then I'm going to just touch his head. His head is coming up ever so slowly and his arms are, as he's lifting up, 
his arms are kind of collapsing a little bit inward. And then later on, they're going to open up as his shoulders go back and his elbows will go out. So all I'm doing is now is just bringing these arms down a little bit. I'm opening up the hands ever so slightly just to get some movement. And I shuttle back and forth. See, now you've got dragon frame. I can look at my frames. And this is what makes animation take longer now because now you're critiquing, editing, and, and looking at your shot while you're animating it. In the past, we just used to animate straight ahead and you would just animate. But this is a great tool. Okay, so we're going to take this one here. Take it one frame. So remember I told you guys in the beginning we're going to do maybe a, a two-second rise. And then when he gets up there, he'll kind of pause in this position and then maybe go to a second position. Um, I usually write that down. I'll say from frame 0 to frame 48 is going to be the rise. And then when he gets to the top, I might make him pause for maybe... I don't know, 12 frames. I go pose to pose when I animate. And I would write these things down as like a guide. Because what happens while you're animating, you kind of get into this, uh, this time zone, this warped impression of time. You'll be here animating for hours and hours and creating maybe 20 frames, maybe 48 frames. And you get this distorted view of what you've produced. Just because you've been here for two hours or three hours, you might feel like you've done maybe four seconds, five seconds, or six seconds of animation because you've been here for so long. When in fact, all you've done is two seconds of animation, or sometimes even one second. So to kind of keep you in mind with what you're actually creating on, on, uh, on film, or in this case, digital, you create like a little blueprint, a little, a little script for you to have your increments on so that you know, okay, you've got 48 frames before he goes up here. So you've got that locked into time. So you know by the time he gets up there, it's definitely going to be two seconds. You're not going to do it really fast and find out you were there in 12 frames and you've got a half a second. So now I'll get back to animating. So now he's starting to move. We just did two frames of the ease in. Now this is still the micro increments, just easing in very, very slowly, very subtle animation. Just getting the guy to start to move. And I'm pulling his arms down because as his body's going up, his arms are going inward. His body's going up. Not just up, but he's rotating ever so slightly, and his head is turning that way as well. And we're going to take this frame here. <laughs> 